Hello, Froggy here, and today I'll be showing you how to get to the tallest point in the Orrery Law Sector. But first, let's collect some loot. This actually mirrors my first Destiny 2 video on this channel, although for that one I went out of map from the outside of the Law Sector, and the point that I reached was not as high as where we're going this time. Just going to make my way up the back side of the lost sector here. There is a handy hole near the top. Not this one. We actually want to go over to the right here, and there's a nice little hole you can crouch walk through. Now we just need to get to the top. Luckily, because this is all vex geometry, there are little cubbies and hidey holes. Pretty much everywhere. I'm just going to cut back in here for some ease of climbing. I don't want to use any sword ammo just yet because we'll be needing as much as we can get in a moment. There should be a uh, little lip and stand on here. Yep. And oftentimes there'll be small holes in the mesh, so you'll want to keep an eye out for that. I noticed one off to the right here. And that should do it for getting to the top. Now we're just going to get on top of that white block there. You can jump up the side of this thing and then straight on to the top to give you the height that you need. And now we can go right over to the other side. But we're not going to stop here. We're going to go all the way to that obelisk in the background. It's a bit too tall to sword fly to you directly, so we're going to need to do some Z-climbing. In case you didn't see that before, you'll want to have 100 resilience. Barricade doesn't actually matter since it'll override with the Rally Barricade. And you'll want double utility kickstart so you can be sure that you'll be getting the barrier back just before it goes away. And of course you'll need the Horfrost Z exotic. So let's go ahead and get to the climbing. You'll be once again climbing up the small crystal in the middle. Although, to start off, you could go on the taller ones. Go ahead and wait for your barricade and plant it again. This is slow going, so I'll give you a timer for how long this actually took me. It takes about 15 seconds to get a new barricade. About 13 minutes in, and we've definitely made some significant height gain here. I'm going to show you about how far away it is. Not quite sure it's tall enough yet, so we keep going. About 14 and a half minutes in, I think the height is probably just about good enough. But let's go ahead and give it one more. Would be silly to come up just a little bit short. Now I just gotta swap over to some sword flying gear, and time to make the trek across. I'd actually dreamed of sword flying out to the obelisk for a long, long time. When Destiny 2 launched, you didn't have nearly enough sword ammo to make it. But once it got up to about 70, you could touch the intangible side. It wasn't until we got here without a box from the Halthus Electus uh, zone that we found that the upper parts actually have some solid bits. Yeeting yourself into the air wasn't enough to get the height you need either, because you would need to set foot on solid ground, which you could do by standing on someone else's head who was launched, but that was quite a pain to quite get that working right. But at long last, we can actually sword fly here. 
a little bit careful to land on something solid. There are very strange rules on what you can and can't stand on here. Many things are intangible. Finding the highest point here was actually quite a challenge. It involved quite a bit of stasis climbing, so I'll be showing a bit less than I normally would of the entire route I took. Mostly be showing you the process of figuring out where to go. For the first stretch, the climb went like a normal stasis climb would. Just wait for your grenade to charge, doing whatever you need to get your grenade back, and going straight up the side. With the addition of a bunch of little intangible bits to make it a bit harder to see. Occasionally you would come across solid ground that you could use as a resting point. Which also helped in case you fell off, which I definitely did a few times. Whenever I reached a solid point like this, I would look around with ricochet rounds to help see whether things might be solid. Funnily enough, not everything that ricochet rounds bounce off of are suitable surfaces for grenades. Occasionally you wouldn't be able to actually see the well at all because of the intangible surface covering it. Definitely made for some weird stasis climbing. Looks like we got another solid bit here. I would always recommend shooting where you're planning to jump before to see if there are bullet holes. Because a lot of the intangible and solid structures look very similar. Now that we're away from the front, most of the stuff that we see here is actually solid. Getting pretty close to what I initially thought was as high as you'd be able to climb. The side wall was very strange to work with because it looks like I'm like a foot away from the wall, but I can't actually move into that opening at all. And now we're within jumping range. Initially, I thought that this might be the highest point I'd be able to reach. The stuff up there almost certainly isn't solid, and the blocks in front of here have the look of the intangible blocks from before. These little bits sticking up, though, are uh, definitely solid. And we've reached the height of the... Vex radiolarian fluid circly thing that you always see on the front of the obelisk. That is a pretty good target, and if I had not spent so long getting here, I might have been satisfied just getting to here. Try to see if this might be solid using fighting lion, but that didn't really seem to show anything. I went over to the back corner here, because technically that's just a little bit higher. Got a nice view too. But as I was shooting the structure here, I noticed that some bits were actually ricocheting off, which you can kind of see in the top right. So it looks like I'll have to do a little bit more investigation. Heading back over this way, I went to see if I could just jump out to the side, and turns out these solid parts of the wall are way back there. So we're going to have to try that again. 
This side of the climb had its own set of strange quirks that I had to learn to make any progress. I only got one crystal that time, and that's because most of the surface is actually not good for crystals. They actually only follow the shiny rectangular metal bits. So I had to ensure that I was only throwing stasis crystals there. If at any point I happened to miss the metallic rectangles, the grenade would just pass straight through an area that I could not, which would inevitably lead to a bit of lost height. At one point I found myself with a spawn point significantly lower than the highest one that I had. There was a handy area to bounce grenades off of, but it turns out it wasn't actually solid. I was able to take advantage of the death exclusion zone that I mentioned in previous videos to delete that spawn point without risking my other ones. Luckily, doing that was able to spawn me back at the highest point that I had reached, which allowed me to carry on with the climb. Very occasionally during the climb, something entirely unexpected would happen, and I'd have to figure out what it meant. With the grenade spawning on top, it would seem like I was nearing the top of the platform or something, and sure enough, that's what was going on. Another resting point. Is it the top? Let's take a look. First up, any ricochets going on? Not really seeing anything, but let's go in for a closer look. Just making sure I had a good initial jump. And yep, that's definitely more of the little panels I was climbing before. I have to be sure to throw at the shiny metal again. For this stretch, I actually found it a whole lot easier to go from the backside. Because you'd go within the kind of uh, intangible block in the back and not have to worry about the upper area where you would be blocked by the uh, little white section sticking out from the front. Near the top, occasionally the metal spots where you could throw grenades would be fairly narrow, which meant that I would have to try to break the crystals on the other side. Definitely made the final stretch a bit more interesting. And here we have it. This is the highest point I was able to find. You can see there's what could potentially be something up there, but I know that the true edge isn't all that much higher, so it's quite possible that that's beyond it. I went ahead and tried to see if I could confirm with a mountain top shot with sticky nades on and it seems to have passed straight through so that is probably all intangible anyways well we've certainly come a long ways you can see the starting area in the background there nothing left to do but see the entirety of the obelisk it feels good to finally be able to live out the dream of sword flying here. And if that's something that you've always wanted to do, now we have a way. I look forward to seeing what other sort of stuff we can get up to with the Z climbing. It'll take us to new heights, although very slowly.